Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. It's, uh, the Bernie sure. Sanders thing. Um, would you support his agenda? Uh, absolutely not. Bernie and I have had many conversations. I think that Bernie brings a lot to the table, it makes you think a little bit kind of uh, gets, the, gets the blood going and stirring and everything, but it's not practical where I come from. Uh, Bernie keeps saying Medicare for all. I said, Bernie, we can't even pay for Medicare for some. I says, right now the trust fund's going to go broken by 2026, and these are people that paid into it and earned it. Now you want to expand it. What happens? So it doesn't make sense at all. What if he were your nominee for president and it's him versus Donald Trump? Who do you vote for? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be Bernie. All right, so it would be the president, unless you leave it blank. Wouldn't be Bernie. Would it be Donald Trump? Uh, let's just say I, I'm going to make decisions based on what's best for my country and my okay. state. All right. That was the voice of Republican Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Uh, the only thing is he's not Republican. He is um, he's a Democrat. And, you know, let me let me <laughs> we got to get people like this up out of the paint. We have to we have to get rid of them completely. One hundred percent. There's a clip that I'm going to play later of Barack Obama. And we're, we're going to analyze it in context. But essentially, he was like, you know, forget about the purity politics. Um, let me just say that you better have some standards somewhere. And it's almost worthless. I mean, it's really genuinely worthless to have someone like Joe Manchin with the label of a Democrat next to his name. He voted for uh, Kavanaugh. He's voted for, I don't know how many, how many judicial picks. And there he's saying that he would not support Medicare for all, which isn't a surprise, but he's outright saying that he would not vote for Bernie Sanders. Now, here's the thing. There are not going to be a lot of Democrats like him, Right. But the treacherous bastards, we need to get rid of them. I don't care if you put a Republican in that seat. You know why? Because it's yielding the same damn results. What good is it to have a person like that in a seat calling himself a Democrat? The numbers don't help. The numbers don't pan out. There's not a vote. What, what, what is it? You ask yourself this question for anyone who thinks that, oh, we shouldn't, you know, we got to we got to know West Virginia. You know, you got to understand West Virginia. You know who know, understands West Virginia pretty good? Bernie Sanders. And what Joe Manchin is doing is he's hiding underneath the guise of being in favor of the working class bloke. And what he's actually doing is just doing nothing but forwarding re- Republican talk, Republican talking points, as well as the rep- Republican agenda which we all know firsthand is detrimental to his constituents. So it's not about what's it's not 1% at all about his constituents in any way, form or fashion, because Bernie Sanders, plan is going to benefit West Virginians like they've never seen before. The amount of poverty that's in West Virginia. I mean, hell, the amount of poverty that's across the country. Right. But particularly in West Virginia, the amount of health disparities that are in West Virginia, that Medicare for all. And it's it's amazing. Amazing. That a Democrat and, and, and again, I want to I want to make sure I emphasize this. You're not going to find many Democrats like this. Not not when it comes down to getting Donald getting rid of Donald Trump. But here is one. Here is one that is saying that he's he's he doesn't want to say it on air because that that would be a bridge too far to actually say on air that he'd vote for for uh, Donald Trump. But he'll tell you that, oh, if it's between Donald Trump and and Bernie Sanders, he's going to vote. He's not going to vote for Bernie Sanders. Man, somebody get this dude. Like uh, West Virginians, you you all need to get rid of this dude. He has done nothing for you except to be an empty suit full of nothing but right wing platitudes. And this is what we're surrounded by. This is what we're surrounded by. We're surrounded by people, not necessarily the not not necessarily the rest. I, I doubt very seriously that you're going to get more than one or two Democrats who are going to go on Fox News and actually forward this kind of talking point that I'm going to that if it's if it's between Bernie Sanders and, and Donald Trump, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. There's a big overlap. There's a big gap. Rather, you have those right wing 
uh, blue dog Democrats who who are no better whatsoever than the Republicans. None whatsoever. But then you have this big, vast center who really wants that transition to power that may not be on board with Medicare for all because they have investments and they have uh, they have uh, lobbyists who are pouring money into their accounts. But if it came down to it, of course, they would vote for Bernie Sanders if for no other reason, not on principle, but if for no other reason to have that transition to power so that their group, their group could actually get the spoils. Then go to those of us that are further left than them. And we're obviously going to support Bernie Sanders if he's the be- if he's the uh, nominee. But then you go all the way to the left and you have those people who who would, are, would be so upset and think that Tulsi Gabbard <laughs> was cheated. I, I, I'll share an article with you um, that would help you understand why I bring her into this conversation. But you're going to have you have a big gap. You have a big gap. And on either end of those uh, of that spectrum, you have people who would not vote for Bernie Sanders and they would vote for Donald Trump. And again, and I want to be clear, like I have no, I, I'm not ascribing any moral, um, any moral qualities to those people who are centrist, like, like near attendant, for example, uh, center for American progress. She's been the president of the center for American project progress for a long time. And she's anything but a progressive, but you better damn well believe that she's going to vote for Bernie Sanders if he gets the nomination, because there's so much money tied up in being the party in power. Right. So she's obviously going to vote because it's in her, her own self best, her, her own self interest. And she would not take the chance. She would certainly not make the risk or the gamble rather um, to bet against Bernie Sanders and he wins. And then the entire Center for American Progress is going to be on the outside. What you're going to see, if I could segue just a little, what you are going to see is all of the establishment pretend as though they've been progressive all along. And they're going to go along with Bernie Sanders as the nominee simply so that they can be there to get the spoils, so they they can get the fundraising dollars, so that they can get the contracts to do X, Y, and Z, so that they can have access to this part of the White House, so that they can have access to this event, so that they can have premier seating at, at the inauguration and they can be seen on international television, those types of things. You have those people who have no moral connection to what Bernie Sanders is doing whatsoever, and they're going to come on board. Then you have those who are like genuinely 100 percent, no matter what they they want Donald Trump out of power and they would prefer Elizabeth Warren because, you know, hey, they didn't like Bernie Sanders and they don't like uh, Bernie Sanders supporters. And um, it's not necessarily unjustifiable if I could just be an asshole for a second. I mean, have you seen how you guys act? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. I'm sorry. That That's totally not the point of this tirade. Uh, the point is, is that you're going to have those people who will reluctantly support Bernie Sanders, but will 100 percent support Bernie Sanders. If that makes sense. Like they're not going to want to. They would rather Elizabeth Warren. They would rather Andrew. Oh, no, nobody wants Andrew Yang. Um, Julian Castro. Um, uh, maybe, maybe, you know, I don't even know who would want Cory Booker. But the point is, they would want anyone but Bernie Sanders. But if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, they are going to go all in because they want to get rid of Donald Trump. They probably are indifferent towards Medicare for all. Some of them probably think it's a good idea, but they don't want to ascribe it to Bernie Sanders. They're going to have they're going to have a, a, a great deal of antipathy with their support for Bernie Sanders. But they will get on board with Bernie Sanders simply because they understand the score and they understand we cannot have four more years of Donald Trump. Then you have those of us. Hell of high water. We're supporting Bernie Sanders. And I need to make sure that all of you understand if Bernie Sanders does not get the nomination that we're still going to support the nominee so long as it's not Joe Biden or Tulsi Gabbard. (laughs) I mean, it's not going to be either one of them. Joe Biden is going down in the polls. Thankfully, thank God. I just, I did not want to be faced with the situation where we potentially actually had to support Joe Biden just to stop Donald Trump's madness. But there must be some justice in the universe because I don't think we're going to have to face that proposition. I think it's going to come down to Bernie versus Warren. And I think Bernie obviously is going to snag it and Warren's going to be his VP pick. Um, that would be the smartest choice. But those there are those of us who are just who who are down for the for the for the things that Bernie Sanders is down for. Right. We're fighting for what Bernie Sanders is fighting for. And we're fighting for those policies. And because of that, that's why we're with him. And I and I and I just break up those individual categories because I, I want you to understand that, that it is possible to have a big tent. But in that big tent, we cannot allow 
Benedict Arnold ass mother like Joe Manchin. We cannot allow some Judas backstabbing right wing probably just I mean just at the core of him is probably enjoying Donald Trump just as much as anyone else. And those are the type of people like we can have a broad tent. We don't have to have 100 percent. We aren't we are not going to have a 100 percent pure coalition. There are going to be so many different motives, motivations, desires that are going to be in this big tent. But one thing that we got to draw the line on and we have to hold the line on is that we cannot allow Judas ass MFers like Joe Manchin in this tent because he's doing nothing but draining the life out of us and, and voting against us, voting against the best interest of America at the most critical points. So, so, so West Virginia, do your thing. I don't, I honestly don't care if you put a Republican in there. I would rather have an enemy that I can clearly see than a backstabbing Brutus like Joe Manchin. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. And as always, we have to take a minute to thank our patrons without whom this show is not possible. Lizzie, thank you for becoming a patron. Patrick, Patrick Blanc, my dude, thank you for being a longtime supporter and for um, adjusting your pledge and um, making things happen for us in a very significant way. Thank you so much for uh, being a patron. You too can join this super elite group of extremely sexy and probably the smartest people on the planet that I have ever encountered in my life by going to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Um, they got the inside scoop as to why I did not do a show yesterday. Man, let me tell you, um, I slammed my finger in the door or the door just closed on my finger, the car door. And when I say closed, I mean completely closed. Like I had to reach underneath my left arm and open the car door and blood just just splattered everywhere. And I just knew I just knew I broke my finger like I just it it was so painful. I thought that my finger was hanging off and I couldn't look at it. So my wife looked at it and just, you know, she told me that it was, uh, you know, I just kind of tore off my fingernail and blood was going everywhere. So I uh, hope that didn't gross people out too much. But that's why I couldn't do the show yesterday, because, uh, yeah, I had, a, uh, you know, it was kind of painful. I have to admit that that was um, low key. Um, some excruciating pain but anyway they found out about that before anyone else uh let's take a listen to this clip from barack obama and i'm going to tell you where i agree with him and where i vehemently disagree with him this this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff you should get over that quickly (laughs) the world the world is messy there are ambiguities people who do really good stuff, have flaws. People who you are fighting may love their kids. There is this sense sometimes of the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. And that's enough. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right, or use the word wrong verb, or then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself. Because, man, you see how woke I was? I called you out. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just tickled myself. But no, man, listen. He's Here's where, um, again, this is where you come for nuance, right? I'm not going to give you the BS, just left-leaning anything, or, or even agree with them fully. Here's where he's right. Actually, no, I want to start with where he's wrong. That's more fun. I mean, seriously, we cannot create the recreate the exact conditions for the failures that occurred during the Obama administration. Now, you can determine the motivations or maybe you think it was all kabuki theater and controlled opposition. And if that's what you want to think, that's fine i totally disagree with you what i know happened 
was a level of opposition like we have never seen before in this country coming from the Republican Party such that they were willing to betray everything that they believed and essentially hollowed out their belief system in order to oppose Barack Obama, who tried his best to work with them by triangulating and moving towards, I mean, a Medicare system, a health care system that was modeled after them. But because it was so important to Republicans that they defeat Obama, no matter what, they were willing to sacrifice everything that they believed in order to get political wins. And Republicans learned very quickly the value of having no beliefs except for opposition. Now, where I say that we can repeat those same mistakes is that Obama was as naive going into the office of the presidency as I was going into stuff that I've done, you know, and and the thing is, is like, I would hope that you learned President Obama. I mean, I know you're a brilliant guy and it's probably a little presumptuous of me to suggest that I can teach you something or recommend that you learn something. But the fact of the matter is, man, I hope I, I would hope that after your eight years of dealing with these snakes in the grass, you would realize that our approach to them has to change, fundamentally change. It's not about purity politics as much as bringing a damn sledgehammer to a picnic not even to a fight like we need to roll up on these people and smash their political brains out politically speaking and blindside them with so much i mean energy and wrath that they don't see it coming because you know why that's what they did to us that's what they're continuing to do and they're doing it for the wrong reasons so why the hell would we not put up our entire armor and go in like bats out of hell and just scorch the earth and take no prisoners? And when we when, when we when we have these when we have these casual conversations about, you know, let's not be pure. Let's not worry about it because, you know, maybe they you know, the people we're working against, you know, they love their kids, too. I don't give a damn if they love their kids. We need to take their kids out, politically speaking. Right. Because their kids are going to carry that same vitriol that has set this country back hundreds of years just so that they can score political points and get the spoils of this capitalistic empire that we live in. So why the hell would we take one second? Barry, why would we take one second to give a damn? About what they think and how good they might actually be, even though they have some, you know, they do some bad things. There might be something good about them. F them. Absolutely, man, forget them. Put them out of our misery, politically speaking. Vote them out. Destroy them. Don't give them an inch. Don't give them an inch because they didn't give you one. We're sitting with Merrick Garland on, I mean, no, I wish. We're sitting with Gorsuch on the bench because they would not give you an inch with Merrick Garland. There is no, this is not the time to be civil. This is not the time to be forgiving. This is not the time to be reasonable because we're dealing with a cult of death called the Republican Party. And we have to get rid of every single one of them out of office. Politically speaking, everything that I'm saying, sound Clip it if you want to. I don't care. Tell people that I'm talking violently if you want to. I know I'm talking about politics. We need to get them out of the paint. We need to make sure that, I mean, they're working to disenfranchise us every sing, at every turn, Obama. Why should we ever take a second to consider what they want? Now, if you're talking about Democrats, why should I take one second to con be concerned about Joe Manchin? Get him out the paint. Destroy his career politically. The dude won't even vote for Bernie Sanders. He would vote for Donald Trump over Bernie Sanders. Destroy him politically. Are you talking about some centrist? If they're working against our agenda, get them out of the mother paint. Destroy them politically. If they're working against an agenda that's for the betterment of humanity which some of them are. This isn't about purity politics. This is, see, this is not about purity politics. This is about winning for the right reasons, fighting 
for what's good because they're fighting like hell for what's bad. And what they've used more than anything else is this this idea that we can actually get along with them. We don't have time for that. We don't we don't have time. That's literally what they work. They used against you, President Obama. That's literally what they use to beat you at every single turn. We're still waiting for some of your accomplishments for this five dimensional chess that you were playing. And your answer is, oh, you know, we don't have to be a a, a, the purity politics is not exactly what we we need right now. You know, I'm more woke than you. No. All right. Apparently, there was a lot more that I disagree with them on than I thought (laughs) because you put it in context, man. These people. All right. Here's where I agree with them. The performative wokeness, the wokeness that actually isn't doing anything but just online and grandstanding. That's a waste of time. That doesn't move our agenda forward. That doesn't that doesn't accomplish anything. That doesn't get Joe Manchin out of office. The performative wokeness gets nobody. It doesn't change anything politically. All it does is just I mean, it does something, you know, because it 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 gets all the way back to the the former president of the United States. So good on you guys like, you know, Twitter, you, you got the attention of the former president. But in terms of actually changing things, performative wokeness does not work. Cancel culture only cancels people on the left. Have you seen anybody on the right actually be like legitimately canceled? I mean, Sean Spicer is on Dancing with the Stars for the love of God. So it's the performative wokeness that that is really that drive. I mean, I think every I think every part of the political spectrum actually participates in that. Um, I just I guess I notice it more from the left because I'm on the left. Uh, But it's the performative wokeness that generates no results. It's the performative purity that generates no results. Like if you want to be, if you want a purity test, then let's find a way to make sure that we start having a conversation like, like 100%. We don't want anyone getting into the office who's not going to bring Medicare for all. Let's make that happen as a reality versus online performance. And I think to be fair, that's what the hell we're doing, right? Especially with Bernie Sanders. to be on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, one of the six committees with jurisdiction over this inquiry and investigation. And I intend to use my power as a legislator to follow the facts, to use the Constitution as my guide to hold this president fully accountable to the rule of law. That is Representative Ilhan Omar announcing uh, that the... Basically, that the impeachment inquiry vote has passed 232 to 196 in the House, basically along partisan lines, except, of course, you're going to have some turncoat Judas, I mean, Benedict Arnold as Democrats every single time. Colin C. Peterson of Minnesota and Jeff Van Drew of New Jersey joined Republicans voting against it. You had three Republicans. First of all, this is what Republicans do, man. They got their thing together. Not a single Republican voted in favor of impeachment. Three abstained from voting. Cowards. <laughs> but that's how solid their coalition always is. They are absolutists. They are not going to negotiate. They are not going to take any prisoners. They will go. They will burn this country down. They will see this empire fall. Before they give Democrats an inch. And if you think for one second that you can appeal to the goodness in them, you've already lost. You're dead and you don't even realize you're dead. So that's just I mean, that's the attitude that they take towards politics. And if we come with anything less than that, those two turncoat, we you know, there needs to be a price to pay. This is politics. This isn't nice. This isn't niceties. This isn't, I mean, this ain't church. I mean, the people are more brutal in church than, than politics. Like you have these naive people going into politics and they, they, they prey on the naivete. I don't think that these two, uh, you know, like Joe Manchin and these two guys in the house, 
I don't think that they're naive. I think that they are opportunists and that think deep in their core to, of who they are, they actually support Donald Trump. But they play on the naivete of their supporters, of their constituents. And if you and I'm trying to help you, the constituent, understand if for one second you give these people an inch, they will gut you and think nothing about it and deliver to you a far right dystopia. All because you thought that you could cooperate and work with these people. No, absolutely not. Draw the line here. It's from a movie. Draw the line in the sand and fight like hell. And make, and make no, no mistake. mistake. The, president the president will use everything. He will do everything he can to distract us from his lies by throwing constant garbage at us. He and his enablers in the Republican Party will tell us to reject the evidence of our own eyes and ears. They will tell us that what we are reading and what we are seeing is not reality. He will say Nancy Pelosi is not the Speaker of the House. He will tell me and my sisters in service to go back to where we came from. But we must stay the course. We cannot afford to get distracted. We must remember, as the great T Tony Morrison said, the very serious function of racism is distraction. Our focus should always remain on the facts. And the fact is that this president is corrupt. Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon Show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.